If you are trying to be a game developer, one of the few 3D packages you can rely on are Max, Blender, or Houdini. But one that stands out the most, especially if you want to be in the game development industry, is Maya. If we look around, we can see that almost all AAA video game studios use Maya. And this is the case due to a particular set of reasons that make it stand out from other 3D software. So what are those reasons and why Maya is probably your best bet and safest one as a future professional game developer? Let me take a moment and talk about Class Creatives and their top-ranked online game design curriculum. You will learn from experts in the field who also have experience teaching at accredited universities. All the courses are taught by seasoned professionals who have worked for companies such as Disney Animation, Naughty Dog, Insomniac Games, Sony, Google, and more. Even for beginners, the courses are incredibly simple to follow at your own pace because they are divided into manageable bite-sized pieces. However, they all work together to make a comprehensive entire course. In their masterclass courses, the full character animation workflow is covered from start to finish. Character animation fundamentals emphasizes the value of video references to bring characters to life utilizing Autodesk Maya and Unreal Engine. And extensive character rigging courses teach the process of how to custom rig characters for all your project's needs. And the great thing about class creatives is the ability to learn at your own pace and your own schedule. So get started today with the link in the description and use our unique code to receive a special 25% discount off the pro subscription. With the advent of free and powerful 3D software such as Blender, things are changing for the average 3D beginner, especially those involved in game development. Since the software can do everything you can think of, from modeling props for your game environments to characters with all the details they need. Since it has great modeling and sculpting tools, but also rigging and animation, which is a very important part of making video games. So many solo game developers and indie studios are using Blender to successfully create great games. But there is one problem though. If you want to jump to the next level and join the big boys working on AA and AAA video games, you will probably need to learn a software other than Blender because the industry is not fully adapting Blender and you will find a hard time looking for a job that will use your Blender skills, at least for the time being. So if you are interested in this level of game development, I mean the professional level, then you will have to look for other options such as Max and Maya. From my personal experience and the experience of many 3D artists and game developers, Max excels especially in creating game-ready assets and environments due to its comprehensive set of modeling tools, as it is the case for many game development studios around the world. For example, Ubisoft prefers Max because it helps them create large-scale scenes due to its powerful modeling tools. And I noticed that they use Max a lot, for example, on games such as Watch Dogs, For Honor, and Assassin's Creed, just to name a few. So Max allows for the efficient creation of high-quality and detailed 3D assets, as it has been the case for many years now. It has the right tools and the ability to handle complex 3D assets, and it can do that easily, for example using its powerful modifiers, which makes it ideal to create intricate details on complex models, whether it be weapons, vehicles, or small props, which you can see all around you in 3D environments in video games, from simple things such as chairs, desks, lamps, to complicated things like electronics, vehicles, and so on. Historically, Max, in addition to Softimage, has been the go-to tool for 3D modeling before Maya became popular, especially after its acquisition by Autodesk in 2006. Basically, this means that any major video game had some 3D artists using the software to create 3D models and environments. In addition, Max's interoperability with popular game engines such as Unreal and Unity, ensures assets can be easily exported and integrated into game projects, which can streamline the game development process. Maya, on the other hand, shines when it comes to rigging, animation, and creating characters. So if you ask a character artist or an animator working professionally in game development, there is a very high chance they will tell you they use Maya as their main 3D package. 
This is the case because it is known as the strongest 3D package for animation. But this did not come from thin air. You see, Autodesk acquired Alias Systems, which was the original developer of Maya. From the 90s, Maya was known for its innovation when it came to animation. And when it became under the wing of Autodesk, they made sure that this continued to be the case, because it kept growing as a superior 3D animation software. And this continues to be the case to this day. The thing is, what both Maya and Max are capable of is not black and white, meaning that both of them are capable of creating 3D assets, building environments, rigging, animation, and so on. But one is better than the other to a certain extent. Even though I emphasize that Max is popular for creating 3D assets and environments, it is also used by many studios for rigging and animation. For example, Assassin's Creed Studios use Max for animating characters, and this has been the case since the early releases of the game. And many people don't know that Max has good animation tools, like Bipad and Cat Animation System, that wasn't updated for a long time until just recently, and it has been used in many different projects. And vice versa when it comes to modeling and creating assets, Maya should not be underestimated, because it has seen a lot of growth in the last decade, as Autodesk introduced many and different modeling tools that allow it to compete with the most popular 3D software like Max and Blender for example. And to be honest, each 3D software has points of weakness and strength, and this can also be applied in modeling because these software are built differently by different people. And in the case of Maya, it has really become a solid software in modeling and filled many of the gaps in its workflow that artists were complaining about, especially in the last decade. So if you want to model complex characters, do retopology, model vehicles, weapons, or environment props, it can do the job nicely within a really good workflow. But one of the most obvious reasons why some people didn't or could not use Maya for game development is the price barrier. Even professionals who used Maya on AAA games and went indie sometimes start looking for free or affordable alternatives like Blender. But this has changed recently for those who love and use Maya in game development. In recent years, and specifically in 2020, Autodesk announced that both 3ds Max and Maya now have an indie version for indie developers, in addition to VFX artists and 3D freelancers for any commercial purpose other than using it in big studios or big companies. This surprisingly came after the big and the most iconic release of Blender 2.8, which I'm inclined to think that it was kind of a knee-jerk reaction to people already using Max and Maya who started seriously thinking about joining Blender or switching to Blender. So it makes sense to offer them a price that makes sense. As it currently stands, my indie is priced at $305 per year, which is a far cry from the $1800 per year for the non-indie version. So now it is like 5 times cheaper, which is a great incentive for using Maya as an indie game developer, especially if you believe in the software and you have a lot of experience with it. But there is actually a catch. Your annual gross revenue from your creative work must be less than $100,000, and you may not use a license on any project valued over $100,000, which kind of is the same point. But the thing is, you can use only one license subscription per user or per organization. So generally speaking, having a Maya Indie version is beneficial because it makes professional grade 3D modeling, animation and rendering software accessible to independent creators and small studios. And the best part is, it comes at a very reduced cost. So yeah, to answer the big question, using Maya to learn and work in game development is probably the best option right now, especially if you want to join the AAA industry for video game development, since Maya has a great workflow in modeling, retopology, rigging, and animation. I hope you guys found this video useful and informative. If you did, please give it a thumbs up. You can also check some of our previous videos. Thank you very much for watching, and I will see you in the next one.